This week at Starbase, testing continues at the Massey Outpost on the Block 3 booster test tank. A massive amount of concrete was placed for the new Gigabay, and work continues at the launch site with crews getting Pad 1 ready for Flight 11 and working to bring Pad 2 into operation as quickly as possible. With Flight 11's launch scheduled for October 13th, how much work does SpaceX have left for Pad 1 before it's ready for stacking Booster 15 and Ship 38? Well, let's dig into this week's update and take a closer look. With the final preparations for Flight 11 being made, it was a busy week of construction at Starbase. Crews continued placing concrete for the foundations and blast walls for the air separation plant, while across the street at the launch site, concrete pump trucks were hard at work with pours at Pad 2 and on the roof of the Mega Bunker. Crews were busy adding a new cable tray to Tower 2, which will help support the hard lines and connections to the ship quick disconnect and its swing arm. Reconfiguration work at Pad 1 continues ahead of Flight 11. Making use of one of the side-mounted access doors, two short sections of pipe were lifted out of the launch mount. An alignment jig was also lifted into the launch mount to check the alignment of the reinstalled hold-down clamps. With the alignment complete, only a few tasks remain before launch, including most notably the removal of the scaffolding on the launch mount and the usual testing of quick disconnect mechanisms and detonation suppression systems. Over at the build site, a marathon 13-hour and 15-minute concrete pour was completed for the foundations of Gigabay with 218 truckloads of concrete. Making use of a crane-mounted jig, a work platform was lifted into the left side of Megabay 1. And five days after the last Gigabay pour, another small army of concrete crews began setting up for the back right section's floor slab. Several hours in, even more concrete pump trucks arrived to perform a marathon pour on the pile cap in the middle of the bay. After a continuous 22-hour and 30-minute pour, concrete placement finally finished on Friday evening. In all, a whopping 408 truckloads of concrete went into the pour, the most we've seen yet. The first load of Gigabake structural steel and a tower crane section arrived at the build site on Friday. Four tower cranes will be used to assemble the enormous new structure, which is expected to be completed in 2026. Reconstruction at the Massey Outpost test site continued with the installation of new pipe racking as work to replace the ruined propellant infrastructure pushes onward. With pre-flight testing complete on Ship 38 now, the static fire adapter ring was relocated to the build site. With no more Block 2 ships to test, it will likely be scrapped soon. Following a stay in Mega Bay 1, Booster 12, which performed the first successful catch on Flight 5, was brought out and taken to the Rocket Garden. Test Tank B18.3 was put through a third round of cryo-testing as engineers continue their testing and evaluation of the Block 3 booster's design. Back at the launch site, over at Pad 2, the chopstick stabilizer arms were put through their first rounds of testing. SpaceX's LR-11000 crane was laid down for partial disassembly as workers prepared to reconfigure the crane for the next phase of construction at Pad 2. Several leased boom sections were hauled off-site, as well as the crane's hook blocks. After three flights without recap videos, SpaceX released a recap video for Flight 10 on YouTube and X, showing some excellent footage of the launch, flight payload deployment, relight test, re-entry, and landing. The FAA released a notice to airmen for potential hazard zones for Starship Flight 11, covering the Caribbean between Cuba and the Bahamas. This area saw ship re-entry debris during Flight 7 and 8. Lastly for our Starbase updates, the Stack Me plaque, which has been mounted on the side of Pad 2's launch table for the past few months, was finally taken down. Switching over to our Falcon 9 updates, Booster 1097 successfully lifted off from Vandenberg Space Launch Complex 4E on Friday, lofting 28 Starlink satellites into orbit for the Group 11-39 mission. The booster successfully landed downrange on the recovery ship, of course I still love you. In other space news, both halves of the LC-39A Starship Flame Diverter were installed this week, bringing Starship one step closer to flight operations at the Cape. The first launch from Cape Canaveral is expected sometime next year. New details were released through the permitting portal for SpaceX's future work at Space Launch Complex 37. The site will feature two pads located at opposite ends of the launch complex, with the towers expected to reach between 400 and 450 feet in height. 
Seven tank farm areas for propellant and pad deluge are planned, with four water storage ponds at the corners of the complex. All of the details are preliminary design work at this time, but extensive underground vaults and paving are expected. SpaceX's CRS-33 Dragon and Boost Trunk successfully performed a 15-minute burn with its Drago thrusters, adding 1.62 meters per second of Delta V to raise the International Space Station's apogee. This gives NASA options to reboost the station without the aid of Russian Progress spacecraft or the Zvezda module. Blue Origin's Dave Limp posted an update on the booster for the new Glenn's second flight, bearing the name Never Tell Me The Odds. The booster's strakes have been installed and engine installation is underway. Dave Limp also shared a 17-minute hot fire test video of their BE-7 engine, demonstrating the longest required burn for their Blue Moon Mark I lander at their atmospheric test facility for vacuum engines in Texas. Sierra Space has passed the critical design review for the Space Defense Agency's Tranche 2 tracking layer, a new constellation of 18 satellites to watch and warn for ballistic missiles, hypersonic glide vehicles, and other future threats. With the review complete, they're moving on to assembly, integration, and testing work at their Victory Works manufacturing facility. Firefly Aerospace's Flight 7 vehicle suffered a catastrophic failure at the Briggs testing facility and erupted in a massive fireball, with the facility likely suffering significant damage. In a statement, Firefly announced that the vehicle was lost in the incident. Fortunately, all workers are safe and were well away from the blast. Rocket Lab has secured its second and largest single customer multi-launch contract to date with space imaging company Synspective for an additional 10 dedicated launches from LC-1 in New Zealand. This brings the total number of launches planned for Synspective to 21. And there you have it, another jam-packed space update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.